Rode microphones are the official microphones of Be Terrific. Find out more at RodeMike.com. Welcome to the Michael Artsis Show. I'm Michael Artsis. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm really excited today. First of all, we've got a great guest coming on. Second of all, I'm wearing my Rangers jersey. I've worn this once since I was like 15 years old. Um, I wore it with Jack to the slot car track. Many of you guys have seen that. And now the Rangers are facing elimination. They're down 3-1 to one against the Capitals. And so I figured, you know what, one last chance to show them the support. Let's do it today. Let's have fun. It might be, you know, six months before I can don this thing again. And uh, you know what? It looks good against the set, I think. You got New York City in the background and uh, the Rangers jersey. Hopefully they can pull it out. They're playing terrible, terrible hockey. Uh, they're dominating the Capitals, but they're not getting any rebounds. Uh, Haglin last night, what is this guy thinking? You got a penalty shot. First of all, catch your breath before you take a penalty shot. Nobody said you have to go out there full steam on, on you, you, can, you can take a minute. I mean, you don't have unlimited time, but you're allowed to take like a minute to catch your breath after being hauled to the ice. So secondly, on a guy who is so dominant with his glove hand and so amazing with his glove hand in Holtby, who's shutting you down, why would you go backhand to the glove hand? Because he put nothing on that. It fluttered to the, to the glove hand of Holtby. He should have gone forehand the whole way and he should have come charging down the ice. He looked like I looked after I took Brienne on on my like seventh or eighth shot. You know, uh, he was out of gas and so was I. Uh, and, and he should not have been out of gas at that point. And then these guys are winding up for slap shots in, you know, in between the, the circles in tight when then they're, all their shots are getting blocked when they should be, you know, ripping a wrist shot or a snap shot really quickly. So the Rangers getting annihilated last night in a two to one loss, right? Two to one, they're getting annihilated. And the other night they lost one nothing, and they just can't put points on the board. And Rick Nash looks terrible. I mean, this guy's just the most ineffective. He's like a he's a tweener, right? That's what I think Rick Nash is. He's a tweener. He's too small to be huge and just destroy people and and be a physical player, and yet too big to be a finesse little guy that's kind of finesses his way through everything and, and is a pest and all that. All right, so this is the Michael Arts' show. We've got a lot to get to. I guess I started with that, but let me tell you about how you can connect with us. There are several ways. One, you can go to beterrific.com slash live and you can join either our web chat or our IRC chat. You can also go to beterrific.com slash chat, uh, live dash chat, slash live dash chat. That's another way. Don't forget about Twitter uh, and Instagram, at BeTerrificTV. You can also email us, connect at BeTerrific.com. And, of course, you can call us up, 201-735-7711. Those are the ways to get in touch with us. I am excited and charged up today, a lot to get to, especially because we have a great guest here, former all-pro NFL football player, and he is a media law professor and a media lawyer. And just, I mean, this guy's a journalist. He's unbelievable. He's a good friend, and he's great on air. Gene Fugit is joining us from the Baltimore, Maryland area. Gene, thanks for joining us. Michael, first of all, thanks for having me back. And uh, I just couldn't believe, I mean, I haven't seen this side of you, this, this fan side. Usually, you're so dispassionate and, and can intellectually look at these things, but I can see you're bleeding blue. And for all of you New York uh, Ranger fans, we're going to talk this way because we know these things can turn around. But we don't really watch hockey, at least personally. A lot of people watch it until they get to the playoffs. Yeah. It's just like the NFL, the regular season and the playoff season is two different things. But watching these four games, because I'm in Baltimore, we watch the Capitals. How did the Rangers win that division? Well, they must have been lucky, had no injury. I, I, I mean, I'm just looking at this was the number one team, the number one seed. And they can't score? Well, I think the thing is that the Capitals, so I wanted the Islanders badly for two reasons. One, I wanted the Islanders because I wanted the Rangers to be the final team to win at the Nassau Coliseum and destroy the Islanders in their final year. And two, I thought the Islanders were, quite frankly, a much easier road. I was scared of the Capitals for two reasons. I think they've got a very physical team, actually three reasons. Uh, I think they have a very physical team. They've got a terrific goaltender in Holtby. And then you, you add one thing further that is the intangible. I feel like Ovechkin can turn it on whenever he wants. 
It's it just like, it, he's almost like a Yager uh, or even a Randy Moss, who literally is like, yeah, I feel like playing now, and I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to put the hurt on you. He's and, a guy that you have to know where he is on the ice at all times. So he's scared. And, and Nash is no longer that player. No, no. That's what but I'm he say- was at one time. Maybe. I feel like Rick, Rick Nash has always been a little overrated. And, and the Rangers usually, usually, and I've been a fan a long time, and I can say this, they usually, other than the Messier, Leach, Graves, Richter years, they usually go after the guy who's just that Rick Nash guy, who's the guy who's either at the end of his career and, mm. and was something or is really like he's almost there. Uh, and 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 that's what killed him. We call that long in the tooth. Yeah, long in the tooth. I mean, how old was Gretzky when he got there? He before? was he was ready for retirement when he showed up. Uh, probably five years earlier, he was ready for retirement when he showed up. And 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 I saw the the, the 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 funny part about Gretzky is I went to two games his last season. I went to his final game uh, where they where he retired, and I went to one game during that season, and I'll never forget. That Gretzky, I've never seen Gretzky play like this, but he was getting pushed around like a rag doll. I mean, he was just the most ineffective player you could ever see. And literally, somebody hit him, at, uh, stood him up. Not really like hit him, but stood him up at center ice. And Gretzky took a swing at them, which I, I mean, I think maybe three times in his career he, he took a swing at somebody. He took a swing at them, missed, and spun all the way around and fell flat on center ice. Yeah. And, and, and that was like, to me, right then you kind of knew it was over. It was no, like, it was just that where was his enforcer? He well, always well, had an enforcer. Right, but the you Rangers... you got to protect a guy like that. Right, Marty, Mc, Marty McSorley wasn't with him, and, and, okay. and so the Rangers didn't have that for him. And right. you're right, that it showed that that's what Gretzky really needed. I mean, when you have a... And they, and they still call it a sport. <laughs> because when you think about what they permit... Oh, it is crazy. Especially with the, with the, with the, with the boxing and stuff. I, I got to. You can hit more in hockey than you can in football. I got to tell you, Gene. I used to love the fighting until I had a son, and then I realized that this is ridiculous. It's I, so I, stupid. It is. It, it's, 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 it really is. And people tell me, oh, they can't get it out of the NHL. Yeah, they can. They can literally say you fight once and you're suspended for the season. Nobody's gonna fight. You're gonna you're gonna have all the fighters out of the league. And whatever happened to the yeah. next play? Get them on the next play. Right. I mean, there, there are so many legal hits. You're that right. You can hurt people that you can inflict pain on. So, so, are you enjoying watching the Capitals? The Capitals are a really oh, yeah. good team. No, 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 no. We like playoff hockey. So, especially the, when we got guys that'll that'll drive to the board and drive to the net, and we got an African American player. Yes. Who who has a knack for sitting on that goal line? Well, and there aren't enough in the NHL. Uh, there really aren't. But here's my beef with it. Uh, there was a I mean, people don't even know Iguodala is, is uh, African. That that's very in, true. The Canadian American or whatever. But 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 African Canadian whatever. They but call here's it. the thing is, <laughs> here's the thing is that I, so hockey in Harlem. I don't know when it was started, but I I went to a hockey in Harlem event, and oh. I was dismayed because it, back in the '90s when it was started, it was for all these kids who were in Harlem who they gave them hockey equipment, they gave them a chance to play, all this stuff. Now, it was a lot of white kids from the Upper East Side whose parents dragged them to Harlem to meet the Rangers or to meet whoever, and they're playing in hockey in Harlem, and it's like, well, there's where the ice time is, so let's go there. And Uh I don't understand when it's it's like this whole thing was to get African-American kids into hockey. Where was the rink? It's in Harlem. There but, really is an ice rink. No, no, rink no. It, there's a, a rink. It's like 129th Street in okay. Central Park, wow. uh, something like that. It might be 125th. It might be 140th. I, I don't remember exactly. But it's literally in Harlem. There are four rinks in Central Park. The wow. problem is that all four rinks were taken up by white kids. Their moms are wearing Hermes boots and yeah. all this yeah. stuff. Like, <laughs> it literally was like being on Long Island, except I was in Harlem. I was so confused. I, I didn't know. I, I don't understand, but it really aggravated me because all the people have donated money and their time and their effort. And the Rangers have now, I found out, distanced themselves from hockey in Harlem, and they were very, very active in it. And so Ooh. I think that the organization has to go back to its roots and become what it is. But without organizations like hockey in Harlem, we're never going to see African Americans really. Uh, take a large part in the NHL because the, the game is very expensive, ice time is very hard, and it's not something that their parents necessarily played. So who's pushing them to play? I mean, it's the same challenge, you know, that golf uh, uh, has. I mean, tennis, 
you know, there are more tennis courts and, you know, for a tennis racket, uh, it's not difficult to, uh, to play, but the, to have rink time, I mean, in this area, that has always been uh, a huge uh, problem with finding rink time. Yeah. And, I mean, I mean, that's the big, it. right. I mean, that is the biggest problem period is, is finding ice time in general. Um, I, I think is always, uh, you know, the biggest problem. I, I love how Jenny puts uh, up in our chat room that Finland just beat Slovenia for nothing. Uh, and they've got the playoffs over in Finland. And then he says the Rangers need to win the next games. Thank you, Jenny. That I wasn't clear on that. They're down three to one, but they, <laughs> they, they don't, of course we, they need to win the next, they need to win out. Gene, that's it. They don't, they can't lose a game. They have to, they have to win out. So they have to win three in a row. And I don't See, think they can do it. And, the here's, way and here's where being from New York City <laughs> works against you. What, because what? Because they have twice as much pressure as any other team in, in, in any normal city. I, well, I would agree with that. I am the, so happy that I didn't have to play for the Giants or the Jets. Really? I felt so sorry for those guys. You wouldn't because have wanted people to. People like you. People like you. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard. You know, if you're in Kansas City, man, you can get away with a lot of stuff. <laughs> what? But what? What do you mean, people like me? I'm. I'm not. I. I can't. I, I was hard on Haglin. Was I not? I guess I was. I, you're right. In 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 Kansas City, they let it go. All right. Let's talk about football a little. All right. Gene, what? What do you make of the Tom Brady deflate gate? My thing is this. First of all, I've got two two parts of this. The first thing in my mind is that every team I know I've ever met it plays around with the balls. I've watched kickers overinflate balls. So I think if I really think it's the NFL's responsibility at this point to stop this. And if the NFL wants to stop it, why are the teams providing the balls? Let the league provide all the balls. And 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 enough with this. If you want to make the teams pay for the balls, then just say that the teams have to pay five hundred dollars a game or whatever. I've done the math. It literally would cost the NFL under two million dollars to supply all the balls for the entire year. And if they want to charge the teams, let them charge the teams. But the reality is, and by the way, that's if they're paying retail, which we know they're Mike, not going to pay Mike, retail. Mike, yeah. Michael, look, look you, you're boring down very deep. Yes. And again, that, that, was, that was great from a fan. I mean, just in passion in terms of, let's look at that. But see, this is more uh, uh, yet another illustration of the systemic problems of why we're beginning to see the demise of the National Football League. It's very close to peaking and, and at some year, we're going to have less viewers at the Super Bowl than we had the year before. We're already having less kids playing tackle football. And the leadership in that NFL office, it's not worth $40 million. It's not worth $40 million. And to see how they handle issue after issue, how they continue to punish the players, I mean, really. I mean, really. Well, and they, I, had, they had Hardy out for a whole year, and now he's going to be out ten games. I don't understand for, for, for something that that you know he, allegedly he did. What kind of trial did he have? So what? I mean, if if I'm hearing you correctly, and and I I can agree with the fact that it seems very arbitrary, and even when they seem to it, like Ray Rice, so Ray Rice got a year, right? And, and yet uh, Hardy gets 10 games. It doesn't seem, none of it seems to ever add up. Uh, I, I, I don't know what they're going to do with Tom. Michael, Michael, yeah. in year, years from now, yeah. they're going to say that this is worse than the tobacco. They're going to say that the NFL, that's why they're settling all these cases now. Well, no, that is, that they're is correct. They're going to say that yes. they knew and have known for a long time. There's no doubt. Here in 1972. I played in a Rydell suspension helmet. Yeah. Do you know what that is? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I want to explain it to the, the viewers and tell me if I'm wrong. It's a piece of plastic or polycarbonate with a, a leather ring in the center. Those rings are suspended by uh, fabric ropes, ropes uh, to the outside of the helmet. And so basically, there's no padding in the helmet. No, none. It, it literally, except for those little things that uh, by the ear cuffs, right? Those little leather. Uh, they wanted whatever me to hit with my head. Yeah. They wanted me to lead with my face. <laughs> they said, Fugit, you're not going to Hollywood. Stick your face in there. This is 1972. Yeah, and 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 so it, there's no protection or padding in that helmet. It literally suspended on your head and moves right. around, 
And right. the, I guess the only protection is that, that there's a plastic layer between your head if and If you whatever. got turned upside down and they dropped you on your head, it would protect you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh -huh. I almost got my jaw broke yeah. one and only time when I got head slapped. I, I agree with you, by the way, that I think that uh, this is worse than the tobacco, and, and, and they'll find out that they knew for a long time. Do you think that they knew all the way back to the 70s? Sure, they did. And they just didn't care? Sure. See, you must remember, and this is part of the course that I teach, that it wasn't until they passed the HIPAA law, right. the law where you have a right to your own medical records, because they blocked it. I, every former you player. You could not get it because they paid the doctor. They were what they call company records. Right. So your medical files were not owned by you. Which is amazing. I talked to Bruce Harper. He told me he had a stroke on the field and never, can't even to this day, get his medical records from that, from the Jets. And that literally they just, the next week he played. No, they my were, favorite yeah. story was when Efren Herrera was diagnosed with a hernia early in the season. He was not told until after the season, and when Tom Landry was asked why, he said he didn't want them to have to worry about it during the season. <laughs> I don't want you to worry about that. It, it's right, no big deal. Right, yeah, right. It's, it just just take some take this shot, and you'll just make the field so, goals. What, so, what do you think needs to happen with Brady? Do you think he needs to get suspended? And do you think that this is? I mean, it, it, this is kind of farcical, right? Is it not? It's a oh, joke. Here you go. Who's running the league? Who's in charge? And, and and Mr. Gillette Stadium is one of the people in charge. And you saw what he thought. I mean, what he said about one of the most respected attorneys in the world. Not one of the most respected attorneys in New York. Not one of the most respected attorneys in, in, in just North America. This man who did this report, for this owner to come out and say those things about him. And I guess you just got to take the money and walk away. But how could he say that? Yeah. About the report. So now you're going to see, well, who's going to take the blame for this? But somebody's got to take the blame. And again, you're going to see a commissioner who doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do. That's no. clear. He definitely doesn't know who's what to do. Who's advising him? Who gives him advice? Who's his top advisors? Pete Rosell? You know, Pete Rosell never had problems like this. Pete Rosell never had problems like this. It's crazy. Because he, all he had to do was call Tex Ram. Boom. This is what we're going to do. And he did it. And what? he didn't have these kind of problems. Do you but think today, oh, we're going to be non-for-profit. Oh, well, we're going to get rid of that now. Don't you? Doesn't it look like they're hiding stuff when it, they start doing stuff like that? It definitely does. They, I yeah, mean, they yeah, it does. Because <laughs> they don't want us to know. Yeah, they Before don't. We knew how much they were making. Now, maybe we don't know. It's another way to hide from the players. But it, to me, you know, I don't. NFL players have one of the worst player deals of all deals. They and do. We can't I even get lifetime medical. I, they won't even give us lifetime medical. I can't even get long term care. Oh, we're going to get long term care. I've been rejected 15 times. Well, no, not 15, but three at least. <laughs> I just got the letter A, man. You're going to have to die in a corner somewhere because we, we can't get insurance for you. I mean, we will pay for it if we can get it, but who would insure you? Right. And doesn't, it doesn't that belie the point? Doesn't that belie the point? So what I mean, if I was going to say anything to the president, I would hug him and thank him from Obamacare because otherwise there's no way well, you just any of us could ever get health insurance. Weren't you with the president uh, recently? Well, we, we had him at uh, our family residence in New York on Monday night. Yeah, he yeah. had a fundraiser. Did you hug him and tell, uh, tell him uh, thank you for Obamacare? Well, I should have. <laughs> what did you say to the president? Well, you know, you know, we got to keep those kinds of things, you know, uh, confidential. But it, it, it was very I was very happy to see him. And apparently he was happy to see me as well. I'll just leave it at that. All right. That's uh, that's excellent. And, and so you had a fundraiser. Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. What is he raising money for, though? He's not running again. He's, is he raising money for the next person. Uh, it was called the 2016 Victory Fund. Okay, so it's it's basically for the next person. Democratic Party. Right, it's for the Democratic Party for the next person. Yeah, I, uh, I, I've been a lifelong Democrat. You know, Maryland is a, a very Democratic state. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have to make choices and decisions. And one of my best friends, well, I won't say friends, but a very close friend when I went to college at Amherst was David Eisenhower, whose grandfather was the president. And while he was there, he married Julie Nixon. So when he married Julie Nixon, he had to move out where he was living, and I got to move in to where he was. So I got his roommates, and that's how I got to know him. 
So one summer, I was working for the Oriole front office. He's working for the senators. He comes to Baltimore. I give him crab cakes. We go to D.C. I said, where are the crab cakes? He says, you're coming to the White House after the game. So we get to the White House. Nixon's leaving, going to Camp David. We start on the roof of the White House where he used to play the War of 1812. And then we, we continue on down. So when it's time to go, I'm leaving, and he's there with Tom Davis. And they say, Gene, we like you. And this is the moment. Did you ever think about joining the Young Republicans? <laughs> this is 1970, right? Nixon's the president. And I tell everybody that if I had said yes, I would have been Clarence Thomas. But my friend said, well, I might have been in the Supreme Court, but I wouldn't have been Clarence Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I know you well enough, Gene, to say you wouldn't have been Clarence Thomas. Is, is, yeah, I might is have asked idea. at least one question. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what uh, that must have been some exciting time, though. Go, I mean, I've never been to the White House. I mean, other than oh, like outside. I, I, I've been fortunate to have been there uh, more than once. The uh, most recent time I was there when President Clinton was the president, and uh, we were there for an event. He was about to go overseas, and I was head of an international food company called Beatrice International Food that my brother Reginald F. Lewis founded. And uh, you know, he unfortunately passed away, so I became the head of the company for a while. And I was invited to the White House with the head of Ford, all the top international companies were at the White House to advise the president. So when he got finished meeting everybody, they said, we're going in to have lunch. They said, okay, as you go out, you'll see where you're supposed to sit. So as I get out there, it said, Secretary Benson, who was a treasury secretary, Mr. Fugit, Mr. President. So we get to a rectangle table that was probably for 10 and 14 people were at it. So can you imagine how close I was to President I mean, I'm pressed right up against Bill Clinton. And what is the first course? Soup. Now, I'm the only African-American there, and I didn't <laughs> want to wear my lunch as I was going out. I'm representing all, you know. And man, the waiters were very upset saying you didn't like our soup. And as I tell the kids, you got to recognize a trap when you see one. <laughs> now, no, 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 no. My mother taught me that you scoop away for all you kids that don't know how to properly eat soup. Yeah. You, you scoop away. Oh, is so that is that what I don't know? Somehow I got a hole in my lip or something. I'm still yeah. <laughs> on the comeback. Something, uh, you know, I was gonna uh, be on my I'm time. with you. I would I I love soup. I would not have eaten soup if I was at the White House. I, I would be Especially very Especially with your shoulder to shoulder with President Clinton. Yeah. So anyway, that was my uh, Did you ask him any uh, questions? I would imagine that you know, you would have some questions for him. Well, <laughs> needless to say, I think my Dallas Cowboy thing is the best because I was at a, a event for, for Hillary Clinton about two, the last time she was running. And our governor and our senator were arguing over who was going to introduce me to her. And she pushed them out of the way and says, I know the Dallas Cowboy. Wow. So as much as I want to be a media law professor, a business tycoon, father, grandfather, I'll always be a Dallas Cowboy or a Washington Redskins. That is very true. Uh, and, and you are a grandfather and a father. Um, you know, I, I, what, what do we drop over there? Uh, my, my cat just knocked the mouse on the floor. Oh, okay. Your cat yeah. knocked the mouse on the floor. That's funny. As long as your cat didn't knock, I thought that that was an Android or an iPhone that we were uh, dropping. Nope. Good, good thing. And, and how's, the, how's your grand, uh, granddaughter, right? Grand, grandson, granddaughter? I, I, can't remember. I got a grandson, and I also have a granddaughter, too, because Russell, uh, also my son. Oh, also. I, that's yeah, right. Both. He told yeah. me. Yeah. He, I didn't realize. I never... He's got a nice uh, uh, young lady to the family, and, and my daughter, who, as you know, went to Fordham Law School. Yes. And she's a member of the New York Bar. She's an awesome girl, and, and, and she had a son. Yes, she did. August. August. And, and August Russell Jones. Wow. And then and Russ had a son. I mean, a daughter. Yes. Wow. I got to write him a note. I didn't know that. I mean, yep, I knew sure I should have known that. I should have put that in the calendar because I knew that she was pregnant. I just didn't know that uh, she gave birth. I should have stayed on top of that, Gene. I feel bad now. Right, right. We and, gotta, and you know that Audie's husband plays center field for the Baltimore Orioles. I, I know that. I don't know if you want to tell that, but I know that. Look, I, I think it's very well known. Okay. It, 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 it's, I mean, it's, I don't think it's a secret. I texted him I the mean, other I night. mean, it's so bad when he got off to the 400 start. Buck, Buck Showalter, who came to the wedding, said, and this is so funny. He says, well, I think uh, marriage agrees with him because just, they just got married last year. 
And, and then I said, what, what's he going to say when he's in a slump? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you something funny. So um, I texted Adam the other night. Um, I, my wife and I went, went out for uh, this, uh, I don't know, wine and cheese thing with a bunch of the moms and dads in the play group. I've got Jack. He's, he's 23 months old in a couple days. And so we went out, we get a babysitter for Jack, and we don't go out that much. And, you know, I'm sitting there, and we're, I'm talking to some guy. He keeps checking the Red Sox score on his phone. And I'm like, what's going on here, pal? Like, are we talking, or are you checking? He's freaking out about the Red Sox score. I'm like, it's okay if you're a Red Sox fan and they lose tonight, it'll be, it'll be all right. He goes, no, 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 I bet a little bit, and I, <gasps> I, I bet on the Sox. And I, I go, who are they playing tonight? And he goes, the Orioles. And... So they come back and they tie the game. And right when they tied the game, this guy's so excited in the ninth. Top of the ninth, they tied the game against the Orioles. I go, who's coming up next inning? He goes, uh, well, Adam Jones, whatever. I go, it's over. He goes, what? I go, it's over. He goes, what are you talking about? I go, Adam Jones is going to end the game. Like, you're done. So he's like, no, no, no. I'm like, I'm telling you. So <laughs> what do you know? Adam, Adam hits a home run 4-3. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> and, but the guy walked away for a little while, right? So he comes back, and he looks all down. I go, what happened? Did the, did the Sox lose? And he's like, yeah, they lost. And I'm like, how'd they lose? He goes, Adam Jones hit a home run. I'm like, told you. I was like, I, told, I just knew it. So I texted Adam. I'm like, hey, this guy just, this is the craziest thing. I'm with this guy, and he's freaking out, blah, blah, blah. You know, Sox tied the game. I'm like, congratulations on the home run, and thank you for making me right in my prediction. We got to get Adam on. He hasn't been on in a long time. Yeah, well, man, with, with their schedule, it's unbelievable. I know. First, first of all, they lost the games in Baltimore because of the disturbances. Oh. So, so they had three home games in Tampa when they were supposed to be here. They had to repack their bag and go. Now they're in New York for a whole week. Didn't the um, – but didn't they, they won't be off for like another 25 days. And baseball is the only sport I know that you can have an off day on the road. Can you imagine after 25 days you finally get an off day and it's not even home? You don't even sleep in your bed. That's crazy. It's not. Baseball, I think there are too many games. There are too many games, Gene. Do you think MLB handled that right? I, I think they did. I was happy with the way that Major League Baseball handled that situation. Well... Uh, I don't know. They, they had options. What were the options? Well, the options were to play the games. They played one with nobody there. Right. Right. How much I mean, money did they make or save? What was the profit net loss? I mean, what are they more afraid that the players were going to not be able to get to the stadium and back? No, I, don't think I they, just they think that it that. just added to the fact that even though there were some disturbances, there weren't any real what I would call riots. It okay, looked- one building got set ablaze. A couple of cars got kicked in. But mostly it was like high school kids running around. I mean, it wasn't what I would call adults out there. There were some felons out there, you know, trying to take advantage of it. But it it, was, it wasn't that. So you and think it, it? In my opinion, yeah. the state we didn't need the national guard. Do you think we, that this we, was? We com- didn't need the national guard to come up in here with tanks and everything. They forced the mayor into that. Do you think that? The, do you think that this was because of uh, the media? Do you think that the media made this into something it wasn't? Because it seems like that's what you're saying. Because from what? Well, the you- media yeah. certainly. Was 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 biased, and and it's very clear that they contribute to the incendiary aspect of it because the the media because it looked bad on it looked bad on agenda. TV. They have an agenda, yeah, and they're not like the uh, New York Times that of course they do depend on advertiser revenue, but they don't have their advertisers saying, well, you know, why don't you get rid of that that columnist I don't like. Where on CNN, they have to promote what will get them to watch or everybody there loses their job. Right. So I, how I mean, can you be objective? No, the, the bottom line is, is profit. So to even call it journalism or news. You see what I'm saying? No, I, no, I no. I, I, agree, I agree with you. I talk about irresponsible journalism all the time. I think it's a problem. I think uh, that you're 100% right as far as that there is pressure on not only the journalists, but everybody in the news organization to get ratings, and they think that the only way to get ratings is to, it's, it's so weird, it's such a weird vibe. I mean, is ratings the same as circulation? Well, I mean. Because if you're a newspaper, you certainly want you know as much circulation as you can. Right, 
Yeah, I mean, but, basically. But somehow it's not the same. But basically. Now, but now you got newspapers in New York who yeah. use, you know, front pages and stuff like that. But, I mean, the thing is, is that you have all these issues that, um, I mean, it's, it's a vicious circle because what they need is they need, um, they need more, it's just crazy. They need more people to watch and they feel this immense pressure and they feel like they have to break the news. But how is it, I mean, Adam and I uh, were, were sitting in a, in a restaurant Friday evening, last Friday evening. It said breaking news, um, the curfew is at 10 p.m. for Baltimore. Right. That, I had to be in my house by 10 p.m. That was breaking news three days after it happened, by the way. It, it, I mean, the curfew is <laughs> like... But it's still breaking. Yeah, it was still breaking the, news. Baltimore under siege. You know, the last time we were under siege like that, it was the British at 1812. So, I mean... The, <laughs> but the flag was still there. But, hey, same thing here. The flag, we woke up in the morning and the flag was still there. So you're saying, though, that this was, this was much ado about nothing. Not that nothing happened, but that realistically... Uh, it, a lot more was made of it. It was a pocket, uh, one one area, one contained area. Yes, police uh, were injured. Yes, there was fire set. Yes, cars were stomped in. Yes, the, the buildings were destroyed. But this wasn't a major area. It was a contained environment that was maybe, in your mind, would you say 12 square blocks of, of city blocks? It wasn't, it wasn't even that much. So, but, see, but then what, what really was scaring the people is when the people started marching, is when the people started marching and leaving where that fire was to go to City Hall. But it whatever. seemed like they were peaceful. See, that, that's when they needed the National Guard. But the marching seemed more peaceful. I mean, the marching I peaceful. watched. It, yeah. it was, but that's my point. But That's need- my point, is that they try to intimidate those who would march, and then they turned it into martial law and yeah. took away the authority of our mayor because the, he, the governor, was of the belief that we were in a state of emergency. Well, I think there was a lot of a lot of political pressure. We've been in a state of emergency. We should have called. He we won't should even have- put money in the schools, and he wants to talk about an emergency. Don't get me started. So, he won't even fund our schools, and the legislature passed it, and he don't even know if he's going to spend it. And he's talking about, well, I want to do something. And if education isn't one of the most important things we need to do, that's the only way those people can get out of that neighborhood. That's how I got off of Mosher Street. It wasn't playing ball. It was graduating. And we ain't gonna. We have one of the highest drop. You wouldn't believe what the dropout rate is. And if you went to one of the schools, you would see why. It's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. It really is. Why? Well, and it's been going on for a long time. And it's not new. And it's not Baltimore's not the only place. No, absolutely see, not. So uh, you know, so it's a lot of stuff. But it's what's hot now. I right. mean, police have been beating people in Baltimore for over years. Of of. of Former policemen told me that for over 25 years, they tell you don't run because if you run, you're going to get slammed hard. You're going to get cuffed hard. And if you talk back to me, you're going to have a rough ride in that metal container without a seatbelt to the station. But and if- this has been going on for years. And how how could that stop? What kind of city do you live in when the governor, the mayor, and the chief of police got to ask the Justice Department to regulate their own department? To regulate their own department, to investigate their own department for beating us up. We had one of the highest arrest rates in the history of the world. Do you think that the body cams will help? The body cams are coming by the end of the year. Do you think the body cams will help? Absolutely. That's why there's so much resistance to it. Sure, transparency always helps in any situation it, sure there's sometimes when you can't be transparent national security whatever but tra- but 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 uh transparency is, is the big problem today and but the real problem and this is what i tell my students all the time because they're at we're at the end of the semester and they're giving presentations and the first thing i asked was well who was the source of, of this information because when i grew up and i know you hear this from the old people all the time and this is during 60s and 70s If anything was going on in Baltimore, whether it was the Orioles, the Colts, or the governor or the mayor, there were at least three reporters from three different newspapers asking the same question. Now it's only one. 
well, you tell me if we're getting the same information. You're, you're getting what's, what's, uh, what people want to put out there. That's the bottom line is, is that, uh, and, and, and I said this yesterday to somebody I was talking to on the phone. The reality is, I'm, I'm a journalist, and, and, and the reality is that we don't know what happened in that van uh, with, that, uh, with Gray. We don't know what happened. We don't know why he was arrested. Uh, realistically, we don't even know. So I, I think that uh, we need to see the case. Uh, that's the bottom line in my mind, um, so that we can make a, a judgment. I think that the media has jumped to conclusion. Uh, see, but, but the problem is, is the African-American community of Baltimore, we've already come to a conclusion. See, in the African-American community in Baltimore, we've already come to a conclusion. Now, I don't know what's going to happen in this case, but we know that systemically that they've been doing this since the beginning right. of time. And they've never been sanctioned for it. We, the FOP uh, union, I mean, they should be ashamed of themselves. And they have a bill where they, the, the police officers here don't even have to give a statement for 10 days. Th th they don't even have to answer questions to their supervisor because of a bill of rights that somebody passed in Annapolis for 10 days, Michael. Does that even make sense? Not at all. It's it's actually it's a shame what goes on. Um, it, it really is. I, I don't know what happened in this case. I, I, I feel like I've, I've like I said, we don't know what happened in this case either. But my right. point is, but you know, even if they're not guilty in this but case, I think it shows so it's, many cases that the things need to had to settle. Yes. Things that they've need to been change. keeping secret. I think they've been keeping it secret. So they how does how does this happen? Because what I say is, if, if, if I say rioting is not the answer, I say looting is not the answer, I say if you want change, elect the right officials, go out on voting day, elect the right officials, get the policies changed, get or get yourself elected. These are things we can do in America. I'm not saying it's a perfect system. I don't believe it is, but... All of that is right, and, and all of that, as President Obama would probably agree, takes organizing, and it's very hard, as you know, doing a show every day Absolutely. to keep people's attention. Yes. See, that's what the problem is. And that's why you try to seize on, even as horrible as it is, when Martin Luther King died, that did spur some positive things. And it's horrible that something bad has to happen uh, to, to move to action. And, and I think hopefully we'll get some action, but I can't say I'm optimistic about it. I, well, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that uh, this gets resolved in many, or, or a lot of things get resolved here, and a lot of changes happen in Baltimore uh, because of this. And I, I think that, you know, there are a lot of places in this country. I'll tell you quite honestly, I was in Indianapolis, uh, and I think there are probably many great police officers there. But I, I'm sure there are. But I, most of them, most oh, of them are great. Are you kidding? But I saw most of them are great. But I saw, ra I saw a racist police officer firsthand. It was unbelievable. I will never forget it as long as I live. And he literally told me right before he did something completely racist, he literally told me that he looks to lock up. We, we, it's a long story, but he literally told me that he looks to lock up ball players from the Indianapolis Colts uh, because they make more money than him and because of the color of their skin. And I was horrified. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, then uh, there's... Uh, so basically... I was in Indianapolis the night before the new stadium, Lucas Oil, opened, which is no longer that new. And uh, I, I was with a, a couple of NFL guys, and I, I left the bar early, but I was waiting for them to come outside, and they were like 10 minutes behind me. So this guy doesn't know, and I walk outside, and there's a cop standing there, and he starts talking to me and telling me all this stuff, and that he's not excited about the new stadium. It costs too much money and all this. So we have this whole conversation about this. And then uh, some girl, a, a white girl, comes flying out of a, a bar next door, freaking out that they're beating her boyfriend because he's black, and, and please help. And not only did this officer not help upon finding out that he was a, a African American, also instructed an African American officer standing there not to help, and the two other officers not to help, and if they did, because he was their supervisor, they'd be in trouble. And literally, they all stood there and watched this kid literally get thrown out of there and stomped on. And, and, and then this kid finally got medical attention because an ambulance showed up and, and whatever. But the police did nothing. No police report was filed. No arrests were made. No charges were filed. No investigation was open. The police stood by and watched. And this African-American police officer come running across the street to break this situation up. 
and literally the officer got in between him and, and the situation. Now, had I had a, a camera phone, I probably would have done something. There was nothing I could really do, although I can tell you that it was an awful, awful situation. One officer, again, not the entire police force, one officer. Um, and, and, and I was just blown away and shocked by it, and it's terrible. It's hard to overcome your history. You know, that's yeah. the problem. And, and, but, and I know. All that. 150 years, we're still talking about the Civil War. You know, Washington Post did a thing of it. Look, Indiana was the capital for the Ku Klux Klan, Michael. Yep. So this, I mean, Missouri came in the Union as a slave state. Kansas came in free. Day one. Day one, no slaves. So, Day so, one in Missouri, oh, we're going to have slaves. Your family is safe in Baltimore. Yes, uh, and, and, and everything is pretty much back to normal? Order has been restored? Yes, CVC said they're going to rebuild the uh, drugstore in question. CVS, yeah. Uh, yeah, there were some businesses uh, that were victimized. Uh, I understand that the government so is going to make uh, interest-free loans to those to try to get those businesses uh, back up and running. I, I can't give you an actual account. Or, right. Or, not the thing that is. drove me nuts is I say, Gene, tell me if I'm wrong here, but I, if you think I'm wrong, but I say, listen, you go in and you, you I, I'm forget about that CVS because I don't know, but there are other businesses that people work hard. They work their whole lives to build this business. They're servicing the community, the community you live in. And then you go, not you personally, but these, these people who were the perpetrators, they go and they destroy these businesses that help them that serve them food, that give them the medicine they need. I mean, they're not attacking the police department in doing this. They're literally attacking the businesses that are in the community, and a lot of the businesses are owned by community members. Well, that just shows you, like I said, these people are not protesters. They're people taking advantage of the situation. Yeah. I, I mean, there's been a lot of people who have said to me that they think that a lot of these people who did the, uh, the the worst destruction here were not actually protesters and were not involved just literally came in from out of town even well i don't know if they were from out of town or yeah. not. i mean i think the largest percentage of people arrested were from uh, baltimore if I, if I read that correctly but no the the organizers did a fantastic job they had thousands of people out there and and you know some did have to get arrested and and some were not a part of the protests and did more uh, violent things that were not sanctioned. Well, that and, and in America, that's going to happen. That's unfortunate. I'm glad that's, that things that's are going to happen. I'm glad that things are back to normal and, and, and are safe or somewhat normal, and that the well, government. Well, but we don't want it to be normal. We, we need we, well, we need changes. I'm sorry. And, and you're, ready you're, to go in a nonviolent manner and obtain that. I mean, we got people visiting the high schools. Your education was there yesterday. Gene, you're 100 percent. was there. You're 100 percent right. Not normal. Things are back to order. At least order has been restored. Yeah, the state, the state of emergency. We have demilit. We now live in a demilitarized. What do you zone. What do you think of the curfew? I hate the idea of a curfew. Even in this situation, I think a curfew is a terrible idea. I feel like it just violates my most basic right of being able to leave the house. Do you agree with me, or do you think that you know what? Well, sometimes I mean, in we some need circumstances. That. It may be warranted. I'm just not sure it was warranted in this situation. You know, I mean, the government needs to have all the tools in the toolbox. You know, when there is a state of emergency, as it was so declared. I'm just not sure this was a state of emergency. You know, no. I mean, I don't know why we had to pay five thousand troops to come and occupy Baltimore. I mean, w w what about that money? We could have used that for the education that he won't use the money for. Come on. Uh, yeah, five I mean, thousand, and then to bring white officers from from southern counties up into the city, <laughs> have them stand in the worst neighborhood. Whose idea was that? I'm sure that went over well. Yeah, whose idea was that? Couldn't they be bivouac somewhere else? I'm just saying. I mean, really, really, man. I, All right, what are we doing with Tom Brady? Are we suspending him? What do you want to do? Well, if if I'm in the commissioner, yeah, you're the I, commissioner. I, I, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to take it at the ownership level. So you're going to you're going to take draft picks. You're going to penalize the yeah. the Patriots. Yeah. I yeah. actually think yeah. that's the right thing to do. Yeah, I take it at the ownership level because ultimately the owner is responsible. Exactly. Do you do anything to Belichick or Brady at all? No, no. I haven't read. First of all, I haven't read the report, okay. and I am an attorney, so okay. Have not read the report. Okay. So I don't know, but if the report said that something was done wrong then it starts at the top. Right. And then if we can find out individual people 
who did something that was unauthorized. So we definitely know that, we don't know for sure that Tom Brady knew, the, the, the report says probably knew, he probably knew, um, but definitely- Oh, 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 oh. he's yeah. a quarterback for a living <laughs> for how many years? How many balls has he picked up in his life? Think about it. How many times has he picked up a ball oh, I mean, and it, squeezed it? It's got to- I mean, how could he, I mean- It's got to be like a will. It, I would know. I wish the ball did have some air out. I can show you <laughs> where I've had my finger bust because the ball was so hard and frozen. So it, don't tell me. That, that's a huge advantage, man. I, I know, I know. So it's, okay, it's a probably new, right? Okay, <laughs> he, he knew. Uh, and, 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 and then the equipment managers, they have texts going back and forth with them talking about the flame. Can you believe that? <laughs> that there would be a smoking gun and a trail? Oh, oh they're that, that, literally like, hey, I, I deflated. That's hilarious. The, yeah. the guy wanted two tickets or something? Or? Yeah, he wanted an autographed jersey or something. There like, literally, go. I got, I'm getting an autographed jersey from Tom, and I'm going to go deflate the balls now. Something like that. That's you know? funny. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it, why would you ever write that, by so, the way? So, now, yeah. the other thing is, is that we have to look at the history. Okay. And this is a team. So that's this what I said. This is not the first time. I said that to Adam at lunch. They literally violated the rules. So I, that's why the punishment should even be more harsh. Do you, this isn't a first offense. Well, do you, so in college sports, they just vacated all these wins from, uh, from uh, Bayheim and, uh, and, and Syracuse. What do you do? Do you vacate wins? Hey, they cheated, and they got caught, and it's not the first offense. Do you think that this investigation should have taken as long as it took? Well, look, whenever you pay for an investigation, it ends when you tell it to. <laughs> I've been ahead of a major corporation. I know how you do that. Come on, man. Ah. Oh. But and I they mean, time it like right after the draft, right? Right, so, yeah. Yeah, oh, I mean, you think that was, oh, man, we're all happy about uh, the draft. Oh, and by the you way. Can't you can't take draft guys, picks till next these year. These guys won the Super Bowl by cheating, but we didn't want to tell you before the draft. <laughs> Come on, Michael, Michael. Oh, man. Gene, I love you. You're the best. You, and you're honest. You know, that, that's what I love is that you, you come on and you're honest and we can have a real conversation about this stuff and, and talk about if, uh, you know, whatever. So you, yeah, until you start paying me, nobody's paying me to say this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you start paying me, maybe I'll say something a little different. But, but uh, you're honest in that. You're, you're like, hey, if you pay me, I'll say something different. Hey, you know what? I think uh, well, this is America. Yeah. And uh, the I think rises to the top. And I, then we got to remember those that didn't rise with us. That's all I can say. I think next week you might have a check from Goodell in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're going to kick me out of the NFL alumni for this. No, not I'm at not all. I'm not going to get invited to any golf tour, so you have to invite me to, to the we gotta, Artist Invitational. There you go. we got to get that going. Right, that would, we, hey, I, I, I know some worthy causes. We definitely have to make that happen. Uh, and you've been golfing. Causes. You you've been golfing. You, how I'm are you learning. playing? I'm learning. I'm learning. And as I, and and I you must like it. Press that I have the uh, TPC on while I'm talking to you. So when, you see me glance over there. I see what Tiger. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, like, what has your attention over there? I guess it's the TPC. What yeah. is? What, do you think Tiger? I mean, clearly you're a golf fan. Do you think Tiger is going to be able to uh, regain some magic now? That no question. Yeah, you no think? No question about it. Now that he's got this woman out of his hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's so funny. Do you know that right before they broke up, she said publicly that she hated golf. I thought that was the weirdest thing. Why would you ever say that and, and be with Tiger Woods? And then they, But she liked Tiger, though. Yeah, but I, you, can't, you can't publicly say you hate golf if that's how he makes his money. I mean, do you really think Brady's wife loves football? Come I on. think she hates football. There I, you go. There yeah, you go. but she never has once gone out and said, oh, I really oh, hate she football. she hasn't said it. Okay. Yeah. All right. You can't publicly say that. I mean, don't. What do you think that does to his psyche? By the way, what you do for a living, I think it's crap. It just makes it more challenging. I mean, isn't there a scientific rule that opposites attract? <laughs> but that's not opposites. That's that's her saying like, what you do for a living, I don't like. That's odd. That's you can't get more opposite than that. <laughs> I like something you don't. That's that sounds opposite to me. <sighs> I don't know. I just think, you know, like she, whatever. It and then, let's, and then as, as the great negotiators say, well, let's see if we can meet in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's always water there. They never figure that out. No, they never get the bridge. No, the, no, br no. the bridge is always to nowhere.
All right, Michael, I got to get out of here. I know you do, Gene, and we do too. We've already gone over. So I'll tell you what, we're oh, going to take sorry. a quick commercial break, and we're going to let Gene go, and we'll wrap up this, uh, put a nice bow on the Michael Arts' show for today. How's that sound? We'll be I back. just hope I haven't jinxed the Capitals. Oh, you know what? I'm a Ranger fan, and uh, they're going to win three in a row. That's what I got Yeah, I, I would, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. They, they were the number one team. They That's what I was wondering. Where's this number one team? They're going to show up uh, Friday night, tomorrow night. Where's the number one? I mean, they were the best team all season. I know. You don't win the President's Trophy for nothing. That's hard. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's what I'm looking to see. So maybe we'll have some real good games to watch. You know what? I think we will. We'll have three more good games. And, you know, at least two of them will, will be just good, and you'll be able to enjoy the last one. You'll be sitting on the edge of your seat oh, with man. a little bit of stress. And I hope it's not one to nothing. I can't take many of those. I don't like the – I'll be honest, I cannot stand these low-scoring games. It drives me nuts. I need to see goals and one to nothing. I don't want to see a game one to nothing. Well, you find out who the real players are, though. Yeah, that's don't for sure. You? Don't yes. you find out? You How do. How that young Russian kid that the Capitals brought along real slow this season? <sighs> he can a, skate, man. He can really skate. It's unbelievable. And these two goalies are fabulous, seriously. Oh. Henrik Lundqvist. Oh. And, oh, and yeah. Holtby are, are unbelievable. I, I think they might be the two best goalies in hockey. Well, they're both uh, nominated for the trophy, aren't they? Yeah, the Vesna Trophy. And and I think they got to get rid of these goalie pads, though, that take up the whole bottom of the net. I really do. <laughs> well, you know on. more about that than I. But they got these pads. They lay them down, and they take up the whole bottom of the net. How They've been wearing them a long time. They've been wearing them, uh, yeah, several years now. Too long. All right, Gene, I know we got to let you go. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back to wrap this up. I'm Michael Arts. This is The Michael Arts Show. Don't go anywhere. Thanks so much. Thank you, Gene, for joining us. All right, thank you. Have a great weekend. You too.